And now, Jabroni Studios, in association with Big Herm Productions, is proud to present to you, recording from an undisclosed location in Oakdale, Connecticut, it's Chris Burns, it's Chris Lynch, this is Dysfunction Junction. Welcome back, everybody, to the train ride from hell and the nonstop to nowhere. You know what? Fuck it. Just get in your seat. We're, we're putting the pedal to the metal, and we're driving until the train falls off the tracks. Welcome to Dysfunction Junction. Fuck yeah. yeah. My name is Chris Burns. To my immediate left, the Chris co-host. Chris Lynch. And, of course, producer extraordinaire, Michael Big Herm. Good P.S. evening, Herman. everyone out there. Fuck. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. My, ass, my ass is sore, but other than that, I'm good. Oh, tell them tell to go we're, easier on you next we're not, time. We're not here to discuss your lifestyle. Listen now. Which All goes right. straight into my quick hit, strangely oh. enough. Have you seen or heard about Postmates, Postmates and their bottom-friendly menu during Pride Month? If you have not, it's not All right. crazy. Is this, like you- the burger? Is this like the Whopper? The, the Whopper? Oh, uh, no, with the two buns or uh, the two it's, bottom it's, yeah, buns. Yeah, it's either two bottoms or no. two tops. Because this that's, is, that's, what right, that, you, that's what that is. It's this for is equality. completely You're going to have to really different. kill me to fuck in here. Okay, you know what a top or a bottom is? Yes, um, here we go. Right, so power top, power bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Got they're, it. they're applying it to like sandwiches and rolls now. So yeah. I get two bottoms. Oh, well, yeah, or two tops. Hmm. Or they're, 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 they're using that as a, a, an issue with... The whole pride thing. Okay, this is different. Logistically, two tops and two bottoms is just impossible. But anyway, go ahead. I'm just, you know what? I'm just gonna <laughs> go find the story. I've heard it on Fox News. I heard it on CNN. I heard it on a couple different podcasts, and I cannot believe. I'm just gonna here it comes. It's the first thing on the Google machine. First of all, oh. <laughs> and how did you get to that to that point? What did you have to search? I just typed in Postmates, and it came up, Postmates, bottom-friendly menu. Okay, so you didn't have to even put the word bottom in there. No, I just put in Postmates. That's pretty impressive. Okay. Postmates, a food delivery service providing customers with restaurant-prepared meals, has produced a video in time for Pride Month touting its new bottom-friendly menu in select cities. The adorably animated commercial featuring a harness, harness-clad eggplant as a top and a jockstrap wearing peach as a bottom shows the pair looking at various foods, some of which are not ideal if one is preparing to engage in anal sex at some point after dinner. If you're a top, it seems like you can eat whatever you want. But if you're a bottom, you're expected to starve. Not this Pride Month, says the commercial. To guide would-be bottoms to the right foods that will wreak less havoc on their digestive system, Postmates has partnered with Dr. Evan Goldstein, founder of Future Method Bespoke Surgical. Wait, 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 wait. So they're suggesting a menu based on the fact that you're going to get anally rotorooted later? Yes. So no corn, no Brussels sprouts. Oh, I don't know. Corn could add texture. I'm just oh. saying. And a whole new sensation, ribbed bro. Ripped for your pleasure, man. I'm just saying, you know, you know internally ripped. Let's, let's be honest here. <laughs> they're, if, if they're going to go that route, let's fucking do it, bro. I'm selfish. I wear them If we're going to go that out. route, let's pop oh on some fetish God. in there, too. Fuck it. All right. So customers in the select cities with the Postmate app. Don't eat this. You'll poop. Can peruse popular restaurants that provide prepared meals that make it easier to get intimate later. So Taco Bell's not even on the list. Probably not. (laughs) On the list includes the Prince Street Pizza, Tender Greens, Dialogue Cafe, Toccata something the fuck, Alfred Coffee, H. Oh, these are the restaurants? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so these are the restaurants that are including this. This has got to be in Europe. H two no, it's in America, uh, New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, a couple others. Oh, so oh, not go. really you America. Know, well, not really America, like New York, but okay, yeah. New York because you know it's New York and th- they'll make money off of anything. Right, bottoms but then are the rest are like literally like <laughs> California. Yeah. so it's literally like you know California shit. As, as the commercial notes, people seeking to bottom are recommended to stay away from whole grains, wheat bran, cauliflower, potatoes, and legumes. <laughs> anything that'll loosen your ass up, which don't easily dissolve in water. Bottoms are also recommended to avoid highly processed foods and dairy, which is represented in the video by two half cupcakes looking over a spilled milkshake with one saying, I cannot handle lactose right now. Look at her. The commercial then notes, if you're going to eat something insoluble, give your body about 24 hours to process it all. Uh, <laughs> have we, ha, it, this, is, this is what society has become. 
we're I understand Pride Month. I get it. I don't get it, but I get it. You know, you got Black History Month, you got Pride Month, and then last month you had LGBTQ Awareness Day, Vision Day. Next month there's probably going to be, you know, bottom, back bottom gristle lump day or whatever the fuck. Mm. No. What part of the pig is that? Gristle. Have the you back ever, bottom gristle lump? Have you, ever seen, a, have you ever seen the movie The Ladies Man? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's where I'm going to leave it. And if you what guys part of the pig is the, is the gristle lump? <laughs> Wait. If you guys haven't seen it, go see it. Is, it. is this what society has devolved to? To make commercials that say, hey, you want to get railed in the ass later? Avoid these foods. Uh, and it's Postmates, owned by Uber. They bought out Postmates for $2 billion, what, a year and change ago? And this, this is what they're putting out. Anybody I, can see this commercial. Anybody, children, anybody. I, I just can't wrap my head around the the whole concept of <clears throat> if you if you partake in that activity, you, this is probably a no brainer already. What not to eat? Well, I mean, let's be honest. It's another case of corporate America pandering to Pride Month for the purpose of sales and. Um, Regard, I think regardless of what your stance is on the whole Pride Month issue and whether you're, what your sexual orientation or any of gender or any of that is, this is probably not the best thing in taste. Um, we just experienced the same thing with the uh, Boston Children's Museum and the Juneteenth watermelon salad. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> um, that was real fucking... <laughs> I got to hear about I, this. Okay. So, real fucking smart. Um, uh, uh, the, the, the cafeteria at uh, Children's Museum uh, does specials daily. And I, I can imagine. one of the specials in their case was a Juneteenth watermelon summer salad. Um, <sighs> yep. I mean, given that you're a history museum, maybe that probably wasn't the smartest move. Uh, same thing here with Postmates. Yeah. Are they pandering? Yeah. But, uh, is it probably the smartest move as it's, as it's just pretty much marketed anywhere? No, probably not. And there'll, there'll be some serious backlash. Or maybe I mean, not. Even, even, I mean, I mean, even, even gay, <laughs> even gay, lesbian, <laughs> trans parents, <laughs> Can't be, you know, thinking that this is great to be pushing on a five-year-old. If they eat the right foods, there won't be any backlash That's at what all. I'm saying. There'll be no backlash <laughs> or at all. Backsplash Black, for that. Black you know, splash, but, yeah. But, and, and we can crack jokes, but but truly, I mean, even any, any decent parent would be like, you know, I'm okay with the lifestyle, but is this really appropriate that anybody can see? Probably exactly. Not. Probably but, not. Yeah, so. it's just very short-sightedness. They're, they're looking at the month and saying, we can rack up a bunch of dough in this month. Yeah, we'll, we'll right. do the I mean, bottom there's, burger. There's a, there's a, mother, a, a, a whole other bunch of other ways you could have done that. Um, but really, by specifying a menu that's catered to the person who's going to get railed in the ass, uh, uh, well, um, uh, it just, and there's your problem. Yeah, you want to do that privately? However, Fine. I would like to say, I would also like to say that um, that... That is a very sexist way of handling that. Um, the term "top and bottom" does not necessarily refer to just m- m- males in a, in a in a, a, a dynamic. No, it could be. Uh, a it female. refers to anybody in a dynamic. So by saying that you need to eat this menu because it's good for your rectum, um, kind of is not uh, damn near killed. Them. <laughs> uh, is technically is not um, inclusive. To Pride Month, it's very specific to just gay men. So they're 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 calling themselves bigots without calling themselves. Bigots. Well, they've made themselves they made a bigot, themselves a bigot. In, yeah, un- yeah. unintentionally by Where, trying to cater to Pride Month. Whereas if I had to get the pronoun wrong, I, I'm a I'm automatically right. Hate, it's a top hate, right the t- right right right. I'm right. a hate filled bigot right because I don't know your your, your right. Pronoun. We're referring to a top or a bottom. This menu is specifically designed for a specific sex set. Well, I mean, of it's that funny. Dynamic. It is funny you mentioned that because I know several lesbian couples, and they use that term yes, quite the, often. The top and bottom is a dynamic. It's a dynamic uh, uh, modifier, and it's used more for like in uh, the S and M uh, and in, in a power dynamic relationship. Right. Like who who who's the boss and who's the submissive? Right. You know. Right. 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 Who's the pitcher and who's the catcher? Yeah. Who's right. The I mean, who's the bitch? Who's the boss? Right. And, it, yeah. and, and, and to be honest, the top and it doesn't necessarily. <laughs> um, it's not necessarily. Um, um, exclusive to the LBGTQ community. 
um, it's uh, a completely normal dynamic within the hetero community as well. Oh, but if you ask them, they're... How they're, dare you? But if you ask someone in that community, I, <laughs> or, or a handful of the people in that community, they're going to say, we we appropriated that. That's ours. I state claim to that. Mm, that. Jesus well, you know, Christ. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I, I just... Uh, like, d- like, like Mike said, I think it's a dumb idea. <laughs> and I, I don't yeah. think they really looked... Towards the lasting impact this could have, because no, I don't think the marketing department really thought it out. They, they failed, <laughs> you know. They really I, failed. I, I, and well, I'm, I mean, I'm, if anything, the restaurant can just change their cups. And, and I'm put not a, a prude. Flag you, on and it. I'm not a prude. I mean, I, I don't agree. Look, I think you're a piece of shit if you pander, but that's the way the mar- that marketing works. That's how, so that's if how they you want to market and pander and make money that way, fine. I don't think this is the way to do it. No, absolutely it not. Can, I think there's better channels there's and better, avenues. Well, there's much better avenues. Uh, two last things uh, on this subject. One, it goes back to that old twenty-five thousand dollar pyramid when they ask the people, "Okay, who's going to give and who's going to receive?" Right. And second, you need to fix that beard because you've got some man. It is not even. It's not even. No, you just cut it straight across the bottom or something. I know. God but when I put beard damn. wax in it, it kind of filled God out. God damn it, Gandalf. Let's do this. Jesus. Motherfucker. You got to critique my fucking fashion. You're wearing that hat. Yeah, it's a gorgeous hat. Okay. You see the shorts that go with it. Oh, they match. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I made sure of it. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> They're good stuff, too. I have, have to take a pic. No, not those. Those okay. are black. Always black. Yeah, definitely always black. Always bet on black. All right, what's your quick hit there, big guy? All right, here's my quick hit. Um, as you know, I Are you am... a bottom or a top? <laughs> Uh, I'm actually a top. Okay. Um, top chef, top producer. Yep. Yep. We'll buy it. Yep. We'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> stay there and keep going. Um, he, as you know, I am a, a, a I am I I am a snake owner. Uh, I have a snake. Um, my issue is with Petco. Um, they're unfortunately pretty much the only option locally for mice. Um, and other ways to get them are rather expensive and I haven't always had the money for that. So, um, I, Peco ran out of mice for like two weeks. They haven't had the, the mice that I needed for right. two weeks. Why haven't I heard this on CNN? All I right. heard about the shortage of formula. formula. It's weird, bro. The shortage it's of weird. bread. All the- right. So <laughs> I, I started looking two weeks ago for mice. The mice size that he needs are gone. Um, he needs a hopper mouse, which is very, it's, it's literally like, um, an, it's like a 17 year old boy as a mouse. It's almost an adult, but it's not, it's still technically an, uh, a, a child. But how does that mouse identify? As a hopper. As okay. dinner. As fucking food. <laughs> I like that. Dinner. As, as food. <laughs> um, so, uh, I've checked everywhere, multiple sites and there has been nothing, dude. There are, uh, two, three sizes below what I need. Two, three sizes above what I need, not the exact size I've needed in in half a dozen sites. There has literally been a shortage. So I went online with Petco, and they had a, a, a subscription. You set it up, and it repeat delivery, and it's 10 mice, and they send them to you, two-day express. They arrive frozen. All right, we're good. I ordered it. I placed the order. All right, guys, this was a Wednesday. It was Wednesday night. All right, they'll be delivered Friday. Friday comes, no mice. Here we are a week later now, today, still no mice. I called. They have no idea what's going on because when you order it through Petco, you don't actually order from Petco. You're ordering from a third party. You're ordering from a third party, party, which means Petco has no clue what's going on. They don't know if it's in stock. I've reamed half a dozen people out this week. Why are you (laughs) selling shit? That you don't know if you have in stock. Because when you go into their app and I look up the 10 count hopper mouse, it tells me I can have it delivered today. Like if I use like a, like an Uber delivery type right. service that right. how, how are you, how are you pushing that? And it, there, there, there is no mice anywhere. How are you allowing me to take? Why? How are you taking my money on a two-day delivery and a week later? Sorry, we just we can't. It's 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 not our problem. It's the problem with the third party. Oh, it's an easy way to foist off the, that uh, supply chain problem onto somebody else. So we've been stalking. I've been stalking mice for like three weeks now. Two weeks, dead mice, and it, it it's really fucking sad, people. Like I've been stalking fucking dead mice. <laughs> Um, so like literally this morning, like 12 minutes before I jumped on, Jen found them on one of the sites, like literally like the mice went on the shelf this morning. We bought them. We called and explained what the situation was that we're starving. 
um, instead of doing their four day, they're going to actually two day express ship it at no extra charge. So fuck Petco, you pieces of shit. Mm-hmm. And uh, coldbloodedcafe.com is the real fucking hero. Wow. Uh, now, you know, the next question I'm going to have is what? Are they gourmet mice? No, they're even better than gourmet mice. Okay. They're Co- see, they're Kobe mice. See when he when he got the other snake, oh, Nelson. Those, oh, no, I've been doing the same ones. That was those were the mice that I just ordered. I saw ten, the picture. It was a ten pack of gourmet rodents. Right. <laughs> I consider all mice vermin. I hate mice. Anybody who's known me more than ten minutes knows I am deathly the fuck afraid of mice. These are the gourmet ones. And he shows this box online on a, on a picture on his Facebook, and it says gourmet mice. I'm like, what exactly? Makes a mouse gourmet. Like, do they sprinkle it with garlic powder? I mean, do they braise it on either side? Do they slow roast these some bitches? You've never given me an answer. What makes these it's, mice gourmet? Uh, actually, what makes the mice and the mi- even and the mice that I'm getting even more gourmet is the <laughs> gourmet. Um, yeah uh, in, uh, by standard is um, the way that the mice are the conditions the mice are raised and harvested. And packaged and and processed. Um, they're they're. I buy mice that are processed in FDA food grade establishments. Okay, <laughs> I know, this, and that's there. It is there. It is. They are they are mice production facilities that you have FDA approval. Normal FDA places don't allow mice inside no they don't no they don't these places are so high end and so about it they have FDA, about it. they have fda approval for mice production <laughs> kind of like being kosher for passover <laughs> pretty much bro it's kind of like you know i see no, this guy not, in a suit not for nothing but even our vermin is better than yours oh my god i see god. some guy in a, in a shirt and tie wearing a nice blazer and he's got a big FDA badge, and he's blessing the mice as they come by the conveyor belt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like these are all my sick fuck. Mice. Are they halal? Are... I mean, are they going to match up? Oh yeah. To the... Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. This, they're, they're, they're. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. This one's tail is quite too long. Uh huh. Oh my lord. They are. They are extremely choosy. Did Jerry choosy raise dads his... choose cold blooded? Did cafe. Jerry raise his pinky before we froze him? Yes, he did. That's a gourmet mouse. He has been raised right. Choosy dad. Did he say thank you as you were putting him mice. cryogenically? And... He he was asking for gray poupon. Oh my <laughs> lord! Heard gourmet but of, mice, but of course, but of um, course. As it as if you didn't think the random acts of silly bullshit weren't going to get any worse. We're going to make a phone call real quick. We promised you this phone call before. Didn't quite go through. Well, he wasn't available. Let's put it that way. But tonight he is. Let's get him on the line. <laughs> Bitch better answer his phone. That's all I'm going to say. See, here we go. Okay, what the fuck? Can you hear us? I can hear you guys. Can you uh, hear me? I got you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, and strippers in the Peabody area, on the phone <laughs> with us, my my cohort from the Speedway Review and titty bar connoisseur, Corey <laughs> Huffnagel, is here to share his golden banana experience with us from the Dysfunction Junction crew, minus Lynch, because he hates you, and... <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> no, but that's what we're going with. Uh, yeah. It, it, All right. If that's the byline, that's the that's byline. The, that's, that's how I that's identify ang- today. That's the WWE angle we're using. That's right. Awesome. <laughs> we're going to rewrite the script as we go along. That's right. And Jeff Hardy cannot go to the club with us. No. So... <laughs> All right, so Corey, we've told the story. You've heard our version of the story. Tell your version yep. of the Dysfunction Junction field trip. Well, first of all, guys, uh, thank you guys for having me on the show. And uh, and I will say that I, I love the show a lot. And, you know, and uh, by the way, uh, Lynch, uh, sorry that you weren't able to come with us. I mean, I really do feel bad that you didn't that you didn't have uh, that you did. No, sorry that you guys didn't have like a awesome night like we had. But hey, next time we go, you're definitely coming with us for sure. It sounds like a plan, man. <laughs> but, all right uh, anyway, enough enough kissing our ass the checks in the mail let's right. move this along anyway, all right anyways so um so my day started off you know pretty good as usual you know i ended up watching the uh, xfinity race and by the way guys you yada 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 titty bar jones let's go <laughs> yeah let's get all to right. the titty yeah. bar experience <laughs> all right <laughs> all right 
So after so after we had dinner, which was in Framingham, you know, we went to the uh, the Golden Banana Strip joint, and uh, I must say, um, you guys getting there before I did, that was kind of a big surprise because I'm pretty much guessing, you know, Herm was driving like Jimmy Spencer on the way to the uh, the GB. So if you know what I mean. It's funny <laughs> how he equates you with perhaps your favorite NASCAR driver of all time. We didn't spin at all. <laughs> no, we didn't spin. Yeah. There was no spinning. We didn't hit. We didn't hit Kurt yeah. Busch on no, the way. No, no, no. no. right. Oh. Kurt hey, Busch, uh, not Kyle Busch. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Herb, how many times did you get cut off on the way up there? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> oh, so you ever go into this? Oh, once, yeah. once we got into Auburn, it was fine until we got to Auburn. It was fine until we got like to Massachusetts. Yeah. Yeah. It was literally wasn't until we hit Massachusetts that it was fucked up. Like right. Massachusetts doesn't know how to place signs a distance away from an exit. Literally, the sign is over the exit. So in Connecticut, like they tell you, hey. This is the exit. It's coming up. In Massachusetts, yeah, they, they, the signs literally read, hey, that was the exit. Yeah. You're um, fucking past it. <laughs> yeah. Basically, uh, so, the sign says, turn, bitch. Yeah, for real. It yeah. says, turn now, bitch. And I, uh, yeah, and that, and, you know, the typical mass hole drivers just, you know. Cross four well, lanes just, to get to the exit. That's just how we are. So. Yeah, yeah, you know. it's it's. Now, know. I've never, other than um, the mile and a half to from the gas station to the speedway, which we'll be doing that trip again this July. Um, I've never actually seen Corey drive on the highway, so I thank yeah. my golden stars for that. Right. And it's funny because, like, I could just picture, like, you know, Herm, like, you know, tailgating one car, and Chris is going to be like, like, Herm, what are you doing? And Herm will be like, I'm going to teach that son of a bitch how to cut off somebody. Yeah. No, he'll, he'll get into your quarter panel, rub you a little bit, put you in the wall. That's what Herm right. does. I've seen him do it. Yeah. All right. So anyway, I'm so we get to the club driver. and uh, – yeah, <laughs> I definitely like to see that. But uh, anyway, so courteous. all right, <laughs> all right. Do you guys want to hear the the story? We're trying, know, but I, Hern hoping, keeps yeah. talking about how courteous I, of a driver he is. He's fucking the whole thing right. up. We're hoping. All right. So, anyways, so I get to the club. You know, like a couple minutes after you guys showed up. You know, we walk in, and you know, like every time, like you walk in, like around like nine o'clock. There's not that like many dancers like up on the stage and of course like when it gets to like 10 maybe like 10 30 that's when you know the real action starts and so forth but uh so we were sitting down you know it was me herm chris and then mrs herm as well um and you know we were basically just chatting and you know we were watching every girl on stage so and of course you guys were basically just you know you know color commentary you know like you know giving your points on the club and and honestly like I thought I was watching, you know, like Dysfunction Junction live, except, you know, with like no cameras, no phones. You know, that, just that's that's just, us every day. That's us every not, day. That, that's I, I not anything new. That. Yeah. I mean, I was really like enjoying that. that but uh, That is the show. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's basically us exactly. behind a microphone. There's nothing. Lynch, give help these me out three, Give these three dates a microphone and some time. We're, yeah. We're, we're good. Yeah, exactly. Give two of us a cooler beer and the three of us barbecue, and we could do this right. all, all day, day long. long. Of course. I mean, I will say this, you know, the the part with, like, the $10 bet, that pretty much was, like, the best part of uh, the whole night. Well, gee, and, look at the uh, time. Corey has to go. Oh, time and, to uh, go, Corey. Uh, no, go ahead. <laughs> hey, why are you guys scaring me like that? Don't do that. That's not nice. Come on. Why do I have to be reminded of <laughs> my loss? I'll just push the mute button. Hold on. No, no, no. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Anyways, so um, the one okay. So anyway, so like you know, we we watch like almost every girl on stage now. For me, like whenever I go there, I always just check out you know the girl from like head to toe, like you know which one's like attractive and which one you know is kind of like yeah you know okay, but not really you know the one that I want to have like a lap dance with. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but you know you guys could just correct me on that one. <laughs> but uh, anywho, um, the one girl. The one that had like the blue, like you know, lingerie. I think that one was Valentina. Now it was. <laughs> now my now my 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 side of the story on this one was you know I brought her into the uh, the private room, and I would say like you know we were in there like maybe I'd probably say like maybe like four songs or something like that. And and I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, the rack and that ass that that girl had. Wow. <laughs> Literally, that's all I could just describe. Is just pretty much like wow, you know, from like head to toe. From an up close and personal standpoint, we have to take your word for it. But hey, from afar, <laughs> she looked great on stage. I ain't gonna lie; that's my second favorite yeah. girl. But I will say this, you know, in person, like you know, the the thickness that she had, like oh my goodness, that was just like amazing. So, 
Thickness. I like that. Thickness. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing wrong with thickness. No. No, you, you no, you can't go wrong with that. And and any time like, you know, you see like a girl that has like a thick, like juicy ass, oh my goodness, that's pretty much the one to die for. <laughs> see right there? Like, like like he's going to the butcher to pick out meat. I like it. <laughs> can I get can I get the juicy one over here? It will be right there. Oh yeah. Valentina to the private room, please. Valentina. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man but overall thank you we have to say thank you for uh kind of hosting you know us in your hometown very cool very cool i appreciate that um i'm a little upset about a couple things once one is you have not once mentioned the fantastic and illustrious uncle chuck so i'm a little upset by that <laughs> all right well i will say you know uncle chuck you know he was uh he was fun to be around and you know and he always has his girl with him too and and uh you know, she's not that bad looking. I mean, I've seen her up on stage. I thought, okay, she's all right. But, no, he's always a good time to hang around with. And and not only he was with us, but I was hoping we were going to get, like, a lot of other people to show up to. But the only problem is that they can't, like, you know, they don't even know, like, how to have a good time. No offense. But but uh, <laughs> but it's, it's funny, though, because, like, you know, every time, like, I tell somebody that, you know, if you want to come to the club with me, you know, I, I always say, like, you know, hey, listen. If I bring you to this club, I promise you I'll show you a good time. The next thing you know, like, they won't come with me. And I'm like, well, geez, I didn't even, like, mean to scare you off like that. Well, I mean, well part of it, no, another reason might be, and I brought, I bring this up to Herm quite often, is nobody brought me back Cheez-Its, you rat bastards. <laughs> Not a single one of you went and got Cheez-Its. I'm still questioning the fact of why they have Cheez-Its in the bathroom. You and me both. and, and people To this that, day! People who listen to this show that I know like in regular, everyday, personal life, they're like, they really had Cheez-Its in the bathroom in a strip joint? Like, yes. I wish I could have taken a picture, except I don't think uh, Uncle Remus would have allowed it. Yeah, I don't think he would have allowed that at all, but <laughs> yeah. I'm he barely Tuesday, liked I'm the still... fact that I spoke to him. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, of course, you know. So... But, uh... I got to ask you, because I think you've already right. kind of made, you know, your pick. I'm guessing Valentina is your MVP for the night. Yeah, correct. Okay. And, you know, as much as I hate to say it, Ebony, very beautiful, because she, cost, yeah, she, me, she cost me $10. She was worth all the money. She, you, <laughs> you, sir, may fuck off. Mm, yeah, with, yeah, for, with, with $10. With ten do- my $10, no less. <laughs> and, uh... You know, again, Nicole, those white boots. I, I still have dreams about those white boots. Hey, can uh, can I just tell you this? I actually had her uh, for a lap dance uh, right when you guys left. Okay, you see, you see I, how he did that. He caught himself. Can, can I can I tell you guys this story did. real quick? He caught himself. He caught himself. He caught himself. Good job, yeah. Corey. All right, you can All tell right. tell us one last story. Okay, so Chris, the next time you come up, right, and if you ever have like a lap dance with Nicole, now I'm not going to tell you how she does it, but let me just say this. You're in for the ride of your life, and uh, I had her, you know, for a lap dance, and I've had her, like, probably twice, but uh, I will say this, you know, she does a lot of kinky stuff, but then yet again, you know, <laughs> you're, you're pretty much in for the ride of your life the next time you have her. And I'm going to ask, a, I'm gonna ask a dumb question. Uh, when you All go right. when you go back into the private booth area there, w- what is the price tag? Uh, price tag, so let's see. We got, so two songs, I'd probably say, like, 60 bucks. Two songs for sixty bucks, correct? That's nuts. Yeah, I mean, well, that's that's basically how they do it over I'll there. I'll just go sit then, by uh, the birdcage and watch her jiggle her ass crack. It's the same, yeah. same. My wife well, does mean, that I, for I, my I, wife does that for all, all the songs for four tacos. Right, four tacos yeah. and rent. <laughs> well, you know? I mean, well, I mean, at one time, you know, they had like four songs for like one hundred twenty bucks, but I guess now they're just starting to like change their price tags a little bit. But that's. That's pretty much all I know. Well, hopefully, if if Herm and Pauly get this all squared away and figured out, we can get some sort of pricing discount. Because two songs for sixty bucks, shit, I'll shake my ass for two songs for sixty bucks. There's got to be someone in there willing to pay <laughs> uh, for real. Yeah, I mean, well, hey, honestly, like you know, the two songs for sixty bucks. I mean, yeah, it, it does feel like you know, it doesn't take like that long. But then yet again, you know, it's just it's worth it. You know, my theory. All right, fair enough. Your money, you choose how to spend it. It's not JJ right. Wentworth over here. I mean, here. I mean, I wish. I mean, I wish it was like three songs. That's the only thing I want. But you know, we have to make you know, sure, it's, it's no matter what, what, we have to make sure, no matter what, there's a defibrillator on site because we don't want to lose Lynch. <laughs> we don't yeah. want to lose Lynch. Don't lose him. Oh hey, God, now, forbid, come on! Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fucking oh, come with. On. Yeah, hey, I, I honestly like Lynch. You know, the next time you come with us, you know, 
you're definitely going to be uh, you're definitely going to have the ride of your life when uh, when you come with us uh, to the GB. So <clears throat> I'm hoping so. Yeah, I mean, well, because hey, because you know, because when I was there, when we were all there, you know, like back in May, I kind of said to myself, you know what, this isn't dysfunction without Lynch. I mean, because I kind of felt bad that he never came with us, but then yet again, like, um, is he on your payroll right now, Lynch? Seriously. I ain't got no, I ain't got no ducats to spend, brother. That's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> You're beyond Poe. Well, he was beyond missed uh, back in I'm May. I'm just Poe. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> You're ramen without the flavor packet, Poe. Yeah, yeah. Or I'm just a flavor packet. Or just the flavor packet. What are you making? Yeah. Flavor. <laughs> What'd you make for dinner? Helper. Helper. <laughs> Can't, Can't afford, afford the goddamn hand. hamburger. <laughs> just helper. Just helper. I yeah. tell you what, these helper burgers. You- Ooh wee. <laughs> All right. Well, th- again, thank you for uh, showing us around town, and uh, we talked about dinner before. And uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, some way, I gotta talk Selig, Jeff Selig, into coming out to the club. I know he's kind of not a fan of that place, but I don't know. I think maybe you know if we could, if we can just get him through the door, Jeff would have. A yeah, good time. that's the only that's the only problem with him is that like, and 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 let me be honest, like you know I actually try to convince him to come with us too and you know he would also say no as well but um and not only that but i even tried asking his friend ben to come along with us and honestly like you know a few months ago you know i thought ben was pretty cool and everything and then next thing you know he ends up starting to like bad mouth my club and i'll tell you this part he ends up saying to me one day he says that place pretty much sketches me because i'm pretty sure that it used to be run by a dude's uh, strip club i'm like I'm like, I'm sorry, but you're saying that the Golden Banana in Peabody used to be a male strip club? If it was or if it wasn't, there's titties and beer. That's why I was there. Yeah, I mean, well, honestly, like, you know, dude, like, you know, the fact that he's never, like, set foot in my club and doesn't even know, like, what it's like, and then next thing you know, the bad mouth my club saying that it used to be a male strip club, yep. dude, shut the fuck up. Like, if you've never been to my club, don't fucking talk trash about it. I mean, I'll, and like I said, you know, if you want to come to my club, you know, I'll show you a good time, but... But don't ever talk about my trip. All now. right, all right, all right. Uh, I don't. I don't want to know what you paid for the club, so we'll, we'll leave it at that. Uh, tell them yeah. where they should be Wednesday nights, real quick, before we wrap up. All righty, guys. So Wednesday nights, uh, you can catch us on the uh, Speedway Review. We are on YouTube, uh, Facebook Live, and then Streamyard. You know, of course, wherever you stream your favorite podcast. So you could join me, Chris, and Jordan, and Tori. Uh, for all the greatest racing uh, recaps and previews and news and notes, everything, the whole nine yards and so forth. And and if you guys like racing, come with us. If you don't like racing, come join us. You, you guys are going to have a fantastic time. Hold on. Real quick before you go, um, there's a knock at right. the door. Uh, ask him a question real quick. i got to go get the door. Oh, there's a knock at the door, yes, huh? All right. So I have no idea what to say. This is this is kind of this is different. Don't make it too awkward. Oh, no. oh wait. Somebody's here. Hey! What happened? Heard there was going to be a pre-bird on the phone. Figured I'd oh get my the horse God. and come is on that... down here. Yo, is that Cletus? Shut up. I'm going to tell <laughs> Yo, you, what, I'm gonna tell you one time, prevert. Oh. Stop going to the booby clubs, especially the ones my sister wife dances at. You understand me? Is this one of those guys where they pretty much just say that y'all need Jesus because, <laughs> hey, bro. I don't on, need Jesus. What you Yo. need is Chase Elliott. Greatest goddamn NASCAR driver of all time. He's better than Dale Earnhardt. Right. He's better than Richard Petty. He's better than... Who's that Viagra boy It's only about four feet tall? Mark Martin. He's better than Mark Martin. He's better than everybody. And I'm done with you, prevert. Stop going to hey, the booby bars. Is Chase Elliott better than his dad? Chase Elliott's better than everybody. When Chase Elliott goes to church, God prays for him. <laughs> That's it. I'm out of here. All righty. <laughs> all right, Corey. Be good. Stay away from the titty bar till we get back. All right. Hey, and uh, the next time you guys uh, want to come up, uh, let me know, and uh, we'll make it happen. Absolutely. And if all else fails, we'll see you in July for the, uh, what is it, the Ambetter 301 at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm looking stop. Forward to Wrong. To... Uh, I will see you July 2nd in Stafford for SRX. That's right. I and, will see uh, you not Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, but uh, no. get there early because uh, Joey Ternula wants to say hi. All righty. Well, I'll see you for the uh, SRX race coming up July 2nd, and I will see you for a New Hampshire weekend in about four weeks. All right. Go wash your hands, you filthy bastard. <laughs> All right. I'm going to make sure to thoroughly wash my hands pretty good. <laughs> good. Thank God. All right, brother. We'll talk to you soon. 
All right. Thank you guys for having me. You got it, bro. Have a good night, man. All right. Later. All right. So, all right. And, and I, I know he's going to hear this after the fact because he listens to the show every week. He gives me a critique every freaking week. And I love that. So thank you, Corey, for yeah, your yeah, loyalty yeah, and your critique. Yeah, yeah. My club. Coming into my club. My club. Like my he's Ray club. Liotta in Goodfellas. For real. Like he owns it. Like he spent money <laughs> on it. Like that. You just a custy. <laughs> It's the club that you like. I can I can see I can see that scene in Goodfellas with the guy trying to talk Paulie into buying the restaurant after yo, be, yeah, after it, time. Yo, hey, two more minutes, he'd be minutes, fucking furniture. Fucking furniture. <laughs> 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 Wait, hey, 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 hey! At least we broke him of the. <clears throat> of the I had I, that girl. I had that girl. He 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 did. He did. He slipped once. He's like, <laughs> you know, I had a few, and we let it slide because it slid in there at the end, at the very tail. But you know, we did correct him on. He he did correct himself. Very good, very good. I've known Corey now, going on six years. Uh, completely met him randomly by accident at the NASCAR races in 2017 at the urinal trough. No, we we're actually in the seats. He was live streaming, and I was kind of. <laughs> watching and looking over his shoulder and he's live streaming on uh whatever fucking page he was running and i'm like you do that often oh yeah can i throw you some pointers uh, who are you whipped out the business card i'm like right here let's talk and that's how <laughs> it began so uh fun talking to Corey. fun hanging out with Corey too and and that night was actually pretty fun my, my favorite thing is when you go that night and herm will attest to this we're sitting in our little semicircle, staring at the stage. Boobs are bobbling. Butts are bobbling. Hell, at one point, I might have been bobbling. And you go to say something to Corey, and I turn to my left and go, so Co where the fuck did he go? And you see him walking side by side with another stripper. Another girl. Into the private room. Uh, and I'm come, like, oh, coming from the bar area. I'm like, or, does he sell cocaine? That's surreal. a lot of money. Like, that's a lot of money. Fuck. A lot of money. A lot of I thought thirty bucks for a T-shirt was Dude, big. It's it's it, they're the same titties when you watch them walk around the floor or on stage from the cheap seats for free that you pay to not be able to touch unless they <laughs> rub them against you. Exactly. That price in the room, you know what I'm saying? I can pay a dollar on stage and still not touch them. I don't have to spend sixty bucks. But you can't play tune in Tokyo either, you know, or you get bounced. Right, I mean, like, Hard. you know, it's not like, I mean, literally, you have to sit there like like you're being frisked by the airport security when they do their thing. Arms out, nobody moves, no sudden moves, you rub whatever you want wand to. You. you rub whatever you want to on me, and I'll just enjoy it. Yeah, thank I'm you. just going to sit here and go, thank you. That's the room. I May mean, I that's, the, that's how the room works. It's all good. Um, again, good to, Are you, you really, you need a go-go gadget arm, my man. Oh, yeah, I'm sore. <laughs> oh, poor Lynch. <clears throat> you missed out on a lot. But you got to come to the next one. I'm sure I did. But always a good time. So I asked you guys last week to watch a movie, and we're going to do a quick movie review. Try to keep it under a half hour if we can. All right. It's pretty quick. So I asked you guys with – one of you used my password. Did you? No? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. And the, I guess the other one found it on YouTube. I'm not he sure. He found it on YouTube. Okay. You used my password. Yep. Okay. So I gave these guys my Daily Wire membership password information, and we watched – what is a woman? Now, I know what I think. I want to go last. So if I had to flip a coin, you're the one I'm most interested in, Herm, because I know how you feel sometimes about Walsh. She gets a little Jesus-y. Yeah. But I want to know what you thought of this film. Um, I thought it was very much done for the sake of being done. Okay. Um. <laughs> I think he did an awful lot of traveling specifically to talk to specific doctors that he knew would that he knew would find everything he said extremely abrasive and irritating. So I think he picked picked and, and chose his his interviewees specifically for them either to look bad as far as his viewers are concerned. Or uh, like he did with the Maasai, um, as they in Africa, uh, like they basically align the, the, that interview basically aligns severely with his his severe left view on all of that. Wouldn't that be the right view? The well, I'm right sorry, you're right, you're right, you're okay. right, you're right. The right with the right. My bad, my bad. Uh, I I don't pay attention too much to left or right, Understood. so I get them confused. Yeah, I mean he, that 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 whole African tribe thing worked really well with the right. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I think he asked a lot of questions for the sake of it being irritated. 
I think some of the people, um, I think some of the people in, in, in the, in the video, um, uh, they believe what they, what they're saying. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with it. Um, I don't know. I thought the doctor, the blonde doctor with the, with the glasses, uh, in the blue dress. Okay. Up, yeah. 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 Uh, I thought she made really good points throughout the whole, throughout the whole, whole production. Um, and not, um, everybody would say she's, she's probably, you know, um, some sort of phobic, but uh, she, I don't feel she come across as phobic in any way. I felt she just wasn't falling into the, 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 the trans thing. Uh, there were a lot of points within it, uh, picked and choose that I, I agreed with. Um, uh, as far as that is, is the whole transitioning and children and the drugs and the, the way that's going on. Um, but I really liked her opinion on, um, gender versus sex. Mm-hmm. Um, one is biological and one is, um, is not. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also the guy that had uh, the brown the brown jacket, Jordan Peterson. Uh, yeah, where sex is is a biology thing, and people are referring to gender, and gender is truly uh, is truly their their temperament. Temperament. It was Jordan Peterson. Yeah. All right. So that your 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 gender is your temperament, and how you perceive and understand yourself. Your sex is biologically dictated whether you no matter what avenue you choose so fair enough uh out of five stars what do you give it i'll give it a three Three? it wasn't bad i'll give it three it wasn't bad all right now senor lynch the time has come so a lot of the points that mike just brought up i i could say ditto to um i was impressed with the fact that he did his research and his homework by asking those people those questions because it just, yeah he he's pandering to them but i think it just gives you a good understanding of the mindset of certain sets of individuals like the, the, when he used the circular question uh, statement to the social scientist towards the beginning of the of right. The can film. you can you you can you can you say what a woman is without well, using a, the it, word woman? It, well, it's a woman. Well, n- you ever heard of a secular definition? Mm. And it, it, honestly, as I'm watching this, how do you? How do we? How do we as people define a woman? Other than she makes babies, an adult human female with an adult human, right. an, an adult, a, a, an adult. Biological female Correct. of the Homo sapien, and right? Just like, mammal, just like his wife said at the very end. Right, of the right, movie. right, right. And open, the, and open the fucking pickles. open the pickles, <laughs> open the pickles, asshole. If um, there was, if there was a better way to end that film, I don't know what what it I'm is. I'm an adult, right? I'm an I'm an adult female who needs help opening this jar. That needs help opening this jar. That there it is. So, um, the redheaded girl there who said that she could be really fucking her career by even being on camera. Uh, went the extra mile to to kind of shed her opinion and light on as to what it is they these people go through when they transition. Oh, you, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's in regards I, to the way that it, it is now because you're instantly pushed to um to to a medical a medical change a medical transition. Right. There's no uh, like she said. There's no talking. They're pushing the drugs to. And basically, these are the, a lot of them are the same drugs they're using for chemical castration, uh, chemical castration of yeah. pedophiles and rapists. So, right, and and that really irked me is that 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 particular the woman, the older woman with the short black hair and glasses, refused to answer that question. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, I mean, although the, with the with the one with the in the white dress with the kind of blue hair, yeah, yeah, okay, all right, yeah, all that right, really right. irked me. Just all answer right. the question. Is it or is it not? And, and the thing about that was he sends the question. He sent the questions to everybody that he interviewed. And there's going to be more in the book that's coming out. I'm not buying it right away because I got other shit to do this summer. But I want to I want to read some of these interviews a little bit deeper than the sound bites that we got just to see how the flow went from A to B to get out of my fucking office. And then Right. Well that's my my whole what was my other issue with it. Not to uh, one second. Was that is that you can I could tell doing production work 
the I watched um I watched little cues like the way light changed on the on the on the, and the the way the light angles changed yeah. while they're f- from beginning to end and their those interviews are extremely longer than the three and a half minutes of total time we get in soundbite and I would love to hear the actual length of conversation right. because I know that things I know that there was shit cut that makes it he, he, that's what editing is yeah, you yeah. put it together the way you want it to look no when so, you have 100 minutes of film time something's gonna hit the floor right 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 so I would love to be able to see those conversations as complete sets of separate videos and one of the things you and I spoke of when you got finished with the movie was Scott Nugent yeah that was formerly my, Kelly Nugent that was my next uh, my next point is that I I think it's very brave of him to come forward and Say hey, this uh, was... the 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 girl that turns to the guy yeah. that can't didn't now can't go back, right? And, he, in the green shirt, yep, sweater. Bas- All basically, right. if he gets multiple infections, he could die because his immune system's right. All fucked he up. can't handle that, and or he gets well. That's what it is. He gets multiple infections all the time, right. and because of that, like it's 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 going to kill him. Yeah, eventually it'll just kill him. Maybe not on a, that an infection, but just that toll will kill him. And and him saying that. He wished he had never gone through it, and then interject the other blonde woman at the beginning, who kept saying, "Oh, it's it, it, it totally reversible, totally reversible. Everything's reversible." To when, well, yeah, and and and, and but, I mean, but you've already done the damage. You, it is, and uh, again, the the problem is, is that a lot of that comes down to perception from one side to, and 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 to the other, and because again, there's. There's unfortunately within the medical field, we still don't know a fucking thing, and we're all just guessing. That's why and it's called and, practicing right, medicine. medicine. That's why we're all still, and literally, we're all just trying to figure it out. Right. Mm-hmm. right. And, and the one thing that kept bothering me, and I haven't even gotten to my part yet, but going back to uh, you now, just talking about Scott Nugent, is that he says it right in the beginning, and then they go into the Lupron conversation he starts throwing the clips of oh, Lupron, the, the, Lupron, the, Lupron, the, right? The Lipon, now, Pron, if, if Lupron is. is used to chemically castrate pedophiles and rapists, how are they completely reversible? That's my question. And that's why it pissed me off that she well, wouldn't that, that question. Well, that's the thing is it that's it that's the thing with with that is that most of those the chemical castrations um they're on a pill for the rest of their life. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's that's the, Now there are a couple of there are a couple of um, shot type things where you can get a shot and basically it will shrivel up your testicles to to nothing. That's but, called marriage, right? Uh, but uh, well, not not mine, but everybody <laughs> else's. And um, but yeah, most of the time that chemical castration is you are on a lifelong prescription. All right, that makes more sense. Yeah, but back to your point. Um, yeah, but I, I overall I found it. Uh, a little jokey, but you know, I think I understand why he took that approach to it because it's, you know, it's a serious topic. But that's just him. That's just the way he is. His oh yeah, and dry sense of humor and very straight faced. You know, he's always a straight man. And um, I mean, he's. I mean, he's he's extremely abrasive, specifically. Um, he I'm can not, be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. But, but uh, like um, when he was at the march. There was no borderline about it. That was complete harassment on that group. Yeah. With him with the microphone. And that was done completely for straight harassment, completely to elicit an anger response. Yeah, like, he was looking for a response. He was done, it was done specifically. That was not organic. That was, that was he staged that that way. So oh, I, 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 I kind of lost, that. I lost a little respect for that because he didn't go the route of renting a place and going to a town council and following that loop like he did with the town council thing. Like with Loudoun to, County, to, Virginia. To make it so that he was a property renter and a, a town person technically and could say what he said. Right. Him showing up at that march kind of was, I think was specifically to make that look, those people look bad. I buy into on, that a on, little bit. On that, but the more you ask that question at a woman's march, and the people that he showed again, I don't know how many how many hours of stuff of right, film was not, on the floor. But, but they're not there to legitimize you and to answer your questions. They're there to talk about what they believe it is. So you asking women's them that rights, shit, 
Right. So what is a woman? Doesn't matter what you think it is. I understand. We're not that. here to answer your question. I understand that. So, and I agreed with your point. It, it did come off very assholian. We're not here to answer your question and leave leave it alone. Is what, what was basically what was asked. And he went, you know what? No, still, you're all women, right? Answer it. What is it? He continued to. So, I, I in that aspect, I thought that was a little assholish. But I just... now, it, 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 in the in the when I do buy the book, I'm hoping there is a little bit further depth. Right, right. There's, the women's right, there's, there's got to be some more Which, depth and, to and, a book. And we'll re, I'll revisit I'm, it with you guys. We'll, we'll, we'll hope there's more depth privately. To a yes, book. Uh, I'm sure. <laughs> Better than 100 minutes of film, but, right? You know, when the woman reaches, yells out, and we don't. Obviously, his intent is to make a film. He's at the women's march. Does he support women's rights? He probably does. I again, I, I'm going to agree with you. That's not how it's you show very it. assholian. That's not how you but show it. But when that one woman yells, "If you're not here for women, we ask you to leave," and he goes, "What is that?" Nothing. <clears throat> Crickets. Again, no, nobody knows what's on the cutting room floor except Matt Walsh and the producer. Right, right, right. Also, but also, does respond to him legitimize him? For the same reason that we don't speak the shooter's name and don't want to talk about him, because it legitimizes him more. If I speak to you, does it legitimize you? Well, he says that to the one lady in the... Well, I think I, th- think I see your point there, and, and yes, it does, because you're... He wants, he wants any answer. An and answer, any any answer. I'll not, agree with that. Not just the correct right. answer. And by not no, no, right, no, exactly. no he wants any answer. And by me not speaking to you at all, it leaves your question on the table, and it doesn't even legitimize the fact and that you answered. And it. you're not entertaining his answer. Right, right. And I understand that. You know, you know what? You don't have to. Right, that's just your right, right as right, a person right, right, to right, just right, walk right. the fuck right, away and right, say. Right. I just and and that was the, really the only time in the whole movie. Now, I, I, and I know he sends questions ahead, and I know how it was filmed and whatnot. But I felt that that was really the only time that that five minutes of film covering that section where he was really a true ass was really asshole behavior. Everything else was kind of slightly a little abrasive. Not really bad. A lot of um, everything else was more of them reacting to how he was phrasing things and choosing there to to give specific finite definitions to terms that he was using that were negative, but uh, like the word truth, and they chose to use the word truth as some kind of evil thing, like it was uh, misogynistic. But he really was uh, again. That's the 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 old adage. Um, I tell the truth even when I lie. Mm-hmm. Because there is a difference between the truth and what is true. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And I agree with that one hundred and ten percent. And the other person I think you and I talked about was uh, her first name was Gert. Yes. Or his for I don't even know anymore. Uh, and you, you got to. I, I don't remember the name. very first uh, family therapist. Black hair, dark uh, black skin, hair, with yep. a little leopardy no, no, thing, l- white, li- very light skin, and very young too. So he'd ask a question, and then the first word in every sentence was, "Yeah." Yes. yeah. Oh, she had the dark skin. She was kind of dark and Indian. No, 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 no. That was later. I, uh, no, I, I know who you were talking about. Dr. She, Gert. Yeah, she had the, the, the she she wasn't. Like yeah, the faux the, hawk. Yeah, the faux hawk yeah. flat top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, and it was, so she was how, very do I, young, but how do I know if I'm a woman? She's like, yeah. Yeah, that's a really good question. So um, if I were to, to say this, what would you say? Yeah. And, oh, she just, like, she got her medical license yesterday. Well, it, it, it's, it's like granola and bubble gum. Type response. <laughs> I mean, I I can't put it any any other way. It's just you're not answering a question. You're just filling air. Um, and it, but again, it's her choice not to answer the question, right? I mean, uh, uh, she has every right to say, "No, I don't feel like answering that." Oh, and that, and that's but it perfectly just, fine. Right, but it just but goes also, to prove but, his. But, it, uh, right, right, it also goes to prove his point right, that they I, don't I, want to accept it. That and also it, it comes. It also comes down to the front porch that somebody is standing on. Like, she might not have an answer, and it is an amazing question. But from where she's coming from, and the and the loose, the loose rules about gender and the way it can be fluid, and there might not be an answer. But you know, that's a hippie. Yeah, great question. I could. I totally saw her as like that. She's the trans hippie. Yeah. Right. Well, like, and, I don't and, know, and, but and that toward, is a great question. And toward the end of when she was talking about something. And I say she because well, even when she answered the question, Jones. she answered it. She, she because at the end he finally does have them. But then on, she says out of nowhere, "Well, I'm not a woman, so I can't answer that." Right. Like, um. 
what? Right. Well, that's because she's a trans man. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, I thought that was the other doctor. I thought no, that well, was, I'm a but, woman, but I have a transgender history. Right, right. Was that was that was doctor. that was the doctor that does the surgeries. That's and right. Whatnot. The that, vaginoplasty. Yes. Um. Yep. The uh, no, the other girl was. I'm not a woman. She identifies. She is either non-binary or something to that effect. I'm not a woman. So she's not, she she was living as a woman. That was how she was portraying herself. That was not a man, so she was a woman or not a woman, but she wasn't a, a man. Now, what I saw, and again, I, you know how much I like Matt Walsh. Uh, Listen to the show every day. Couldn't wait for what is a woman. Had a watch party with uh, Derek the Undertaker and his wife. Um, I came away with it. I give it four. I think it could have got. I could have been better. Oh wait, did we get your star rating? I'd say three, three and a half. Okay, I'm giving it a four because I thought there were certain. Could have done without the circular logic uh, gender studies guy who a- answered every question with a question, and that there is oh, the no gr- the, worse the, thing. The, the gray hair guy. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. There's no worse thing in to me is if I ask you a question, you answer with a question. That is just a logical fallacy. You just don't want to answer. Do you eat the cookies? I don't know. Do you eat the cookies? Right. Did you slap your brother? Did my brother slap me? You know, stop it with that shit. If you don't want to answer the question, I don't want to answer that. Fine, we move along. Yeah, I mean, I would have, re- re- yeah, I, I, I get it. And that's kind of comes down to what he is. He's literally internalizing in his head, and you could see it, him balancing, trying to answer a question, uh, keep his job, keep his commu- LGBT community status, uh, keep his, his self-composure, keep his self-respect. You know what I mean? There was a lot going on. You watched it happen, so mm-hmm. he didn't answer completely effectively. I agree with he was that. Be, you could see him, his thought process being very... Yeah. Um, well, him and the congressman he would, are he the would, only ones I had a problem with in that entire film. Everybody else, you can spew all your gender mumbo-jumbo that you want. You sat, you answered the questions, you went through it, good on you. At first, a uh, gender studies guy says, you're about 30 seconds away from me cutting this off. And then the congressman just... Because he was, well, yeah, well, he was dropping, wasn't he using the... The, the, wasn't the, that truth. the truth, yeah. the truth, the I don't, thing. I don't like that word. You don't like. Since when is the truth derogatory? Well, the way you're using it, uh, how am I using it? I, I'm using. I'm, I'm basically using the term. I'm trying to get to the truth by asking these questions. Well, I don't like the way you use it, and it, it's offensive to me. And it, okay, I get it. And then the congressman just says, "I think this interview's <clears throat> over." You literally had the questions in your hand before he shows up. How did you know that these questions weren't going to come at you? It's not my fault that you're going to go jibber jabber jibber jabber. And he did. How many times did he say to the congressman a question and he would stumble for the first three seconds? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, if I ask you, how do I, and I'm not going to do that now because we don't have 45 minutes, how do I properly cook a pastrami? Right. You're going to walk me through the steps on how to cook a pastrami. If I ask Lynch, you know, how do I raise up foster dogs? You're going to walk me through, and you're going to have an answer. When you ask, when you ask, he asked certain people these questions, it was all jibber-jabber the whole entire fucking time. And I'm just going to point to those two, because I'm going to even give the ones that, uh, the lady who went to UConn, the doc, that was the doctor out of Providence, everybody else, whether they were uncomfortable or not, they answered the questions. It's what you're here for. I'm making a documentary. Here are my questions. Thank you for accepting me into your office. Let's have a discussion. Well, you would think they would have prep time to, like you said, like we've all said, they had the questions in front of them. Have something, have a canned response. Right? Something. And, I mean, mean, much like he did with the girl, oh, the girl, the bearded lady on Dr. Phil, you know, well, trans women Which one? There was like three of them on that show. The... the, the (laughs) <laughs> my favorite the, one the prettiest one the prettiest one the long, i know <laughs> yeah. that's fucked beard. up i'm just saying that like i'm i'm gonna say that uh, uh, you know i know okay. <laughs> i'm just gonna i'm just heard let me preface this with no homo, no homo. but the the prettiest of the three dudes yeah. with beards Addison. okay all right thank you just so we're clear you know when 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 when, Fuck me! Uh, when Addison, you mean the I can't even say to, he or you mean she. The pretty one next to him, next to okay, next to I'm the other <laughs> half breed, whatever the fuck. 
And, you know, the, the whole thing is trans women are women and, and trans women's rights are women's rights. And he says, I just want the answer to the one question. It's the name of the fucking film. What is a woman? My problem with the entire thing, even today, and again, once my racing trip is done in July, I'm ordering the book. I'll read the book. You all want to read it. Feel free. Have fun. But nobody answers the question. Ever. Well, Except his wife. They, they don't. Oh, wait. And the Star Wars guy. Yeah, they. Because <laughs> I got, because I got a dick. <laughs> how do you? You're not a biologist. Nope, you're not a doctor. Uh, uh-uh. uh. How do you know you're a man? Because I got. Because I got a dick. dick. <laughs> he, I got he a was, dick. He's probably the most entertaining one out of the bunch. <laughs> they don't want to answer the question, Chris. Him and the swinging sock guy in San Francisco. Yes. They don't want to answer that question because, God forbid, they answer the wrong way. Well, that that's and and. Like Mike said earlier, it completely def- deflates their balloon with any credibility they have within their community, and they could be any answer could be misconstrued as the wrong answer. Right. Well, that's the that's the point that the uh, the the Asian American girl with uh, glasses mm-hmm. the 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 uh, was making is that um, anything other than going along with it, and it's can it's pretty much a cancel culture. Right. It, it yeah. Is a if culture. you do anything but support it, um, you're a bigot, and you uh, suck. like they like they did with the like uh, the girls with the in the in the sports. Yeah. Uh, they brought it up and were basically told, "Look, uh, this is how it's going to be." Right. Can we bring in counselors to help you? Because you're the one that's having the problem. You're the one that's the issue. We're going to bring counselors in to help you get through this. That's what they did for those those girls in those girls from sports. Fairfield, yeah. Right, they brought those brought counselors in because because this is obviously a problem for you. No, it's a problem. Period. Like with the right, swimmer, like, we well, all like, had our good time talking right, well, about like the, the swimmer. Like that girl said, "You're you know, it's a few years away, but what you're going to have is men's sports and then transgender sports." Mm-hmm. No, I I I don't see that. To be a falsity, I think it's that mm-hmm. is on its way down the pike. I, I don't doubt it. And, and, and there are some people that, to this day, think that because this has really only become a huge issue over the last 10 years or so, nobody gave a shit before. I don't care if you're gay, you want to wear a dress. Hell, I had a college professor allowed. that we wore don't a care dress. care what you think. You're a man. You're not doing it here. Right. But don't ask me to play along and say, all right, Susie, you want to be Saul now. You're a man. No. You can never be in, 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 until you get prostate cancer. You're not a man. You can live like a man until you get kicked in the balls. You're not a man, right? Well, like what's the the, the guy said? There's uh um ten percent of the, you know the, there's there's women that have masculine traits. Yeah, Jordan Peterson. There's there's and feminine there's, males and, 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 and masculine females and, and 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 extremes of both. But it still doesn't change that they're a male or a female. Exactly. Again, that comes down to temperament. Right. And and going back to something you brought up earlier, where, and a lot of people say, it, well, gender is a social construct. Going to Africa kind of proved that it's a Western construct, because here they are, where we live out in the they bush. Didn't even, there was, they, there was, they didn't even un, the, know. They, they didn't understand the notion of transgender or, you know, well, what if I'm a man and I want to do a girl's duties? Yeah, that just, that that, just doesn't that, happen. Yeah, no, that doesn't happen here. No. What, what are you talking about? Right. Are you are you saying the man has a <laughs> vagina? <You know? laughs> right, like they, you know, like they were like well, you know, men have a penis and girls have a vagina, uh, and that's just the way it is. Well, that just proves the point that th- th- being exposed to this in the West here that we're we we gobbled up a little bit easier as the pill that's maybe hard to swallow, but we're used to taking it, so we're just going to take it. it well, now over there. It's unheard of. It's the pill right now that they're taking so that they feel like it I feel it it gives them worth. They need to it's it's what they're associating with that's the cool thing and they feel that because they identify with that that it it, it it's who they are and it's all right it but they they really don't aren't I don't think they really know what they're doing. It could be the Africans or the Americans. The Americans. Americans. Okay, I got you. Uh, um, I, it's it's it, being trans right now is the easiest way to fit in. Yeah, 
It's like a 15-year-old so, wearing it's, a Led Zeppelin it's, t-shirt. It's very much the easiest way to fit in and be socially acceptable with I, all of the other kids that want to fit in. I can buy that because when we were teenagers, what was the big, because the big deal? Because uh, acid wash jeans and a Metallica shirt. Because they're, because, and, and, the med, and the medical science is, is, is proving it right along because they're not going through the whole... Like it used to be, there was lots and lots of talking and counseling before to make sure everything was right. Now we're talking to a counselor, and immediately we're moving right oh, yeah. to chemicals and right to, to to puberty blockers, and going right to puberty blockers, and right from that to horm- to, to transformational hormones. You know, who I felt the worst for other than Scott Nugent, the the, the unnamed dad from Canada. Yes, that was horrible. How fucking heartbreaking! How was is that, that a law? How is that a law? Ask the Canadians. Ask the Canadians. Misgendering I, one of your own children. I mean, come and on. if you want to, if you want to stop this, because we're going to start it, whether you like it or not. Right. So that's the government saying we're going to do whatever we want. We think we want to do, no matter what. Mm-hmm. And the the children, if and I just heard a story the other day about uh, a kid now sixteen, but. Even though he couldn't speak, he told us at an at two years old that he wasn't a girl; he was a boy. I don't know what two year two year olds can't identify what's in their diaper, let alone if they're male or female. Poop. That's all they can tell. Yeah, you. right. Poop. Daddy, diaper. I'm like, oh shit! Here it comes again. You know, it just oh, to me, it's it's like a religion, and I'm somewhat religious. I know. A lot of people, yourself included, don't have a lot of time for religion. I, I would call it more of a cult. But wait, it's the church of self. I feel this, therefore the ch- I it's, am. It's the church of self-importance. Correct. Not and the church of self. You're expecting us to... Uh, uh, to you're uh, you're, you're asking was, me to come to your pulpit. Right. You're asking me to believe what that you are something else and you... And because that's who your self is, but you can't accept who your biological self is either. Mm-hmm. Well, so, and I think that's an amazing analogy, is putting that analog to religion. Because it came to me yesterday, and I was like, I can't I, wait to share this with I, the guys. I got to say, that's a very, very intelligent analog because it's it. I'm like I'm like getting tingles with just thinking about it. Because, you're welcome. Well. Like Mike was saying, if if you're a Christian, you're a Jew, I'm a Muslim, okay? Chris, Mike, and Lynch, we all I agree to the same basic principle. Mm-hmm. The same principles. It's the follow-through that's different. The practice versus the faith. Right, right, right. We all agree that there is a, a there's some sort of higher sky. power on, on that level yeah. in that situation. Some great choice of how, words. All right, some sort of higher power to all of us because some of us it's a it's God it. or whatever, and we all perceive it. Now I'm getting them. We, yeah. we all we all perceive it and pray to it and follow through it mm-hmm. differently. Right, and and you know th- there's this ethereal being up there who's placing judgment or. Way you're his magic wand, whatever you want to do. It's the same when it comes to the whole gender dys- dysmorphia. Uh, dysmorphia. Mm-hmm. You, well, you, you. I believe are, in those cases. I do. I believe in the true. And, and when you start quoting true numbers of gender dysmorphia, you're actually talking about 2% of the population at most. It's a very small the number. The amount of yeah. just of gender dysmorphia sufferers are not anywhere close to the number of people that are trans well identifying mm. so you take the person, no, gender dysphoria is real you take the, so if you take that using the religious example <clears throat> you take that person who is actually gender dysmorphic and you liken her to a christian that's that's what would be the normal normal finger quotes if i'm having conflicted feelings about who i really am True, true feelings. Because in my head, right, I, I am right. so that's ups- not that's not you reading and inferring and creating a situation in your head. This is bi- this is the, it, you're fighting that situation. You're, you're, you're not you're, you're fighting you're, the battle. Right. You're we're, not you're you're not creating a. a, a let or, me try it like this. At, whereas here comes here comes eighteen thousand transgenders marching from the right, and they're saying, "No, you're wrong. 
my religion's right. Yeah, it's that, really it, it, like. it, it, it is. It, it's go, it goes back to why we had fought several wars in the course of our history is because of fucking religion. Yeah, and I'm sorry. Ninety percent of them. I'm yeah. sorry, not sorry. That I know it irked Herm when that when he was at the women's rights um, rally, and it irked me too. But <clears throat> his passive calm demeanor. If he was screaming at the top of his lungs and just being... Even, it'd be even worse. It, it, let, me, let me finish. Sorry. <clears throat> if I go to a rally, any rally, it could be women's rights, it could be transgender rights, it could be I want a new basketball court in my town, and I start screaming and cursing and do, being absolutely belligerent to your cause, I would expect, expect... A rude response. Now I'm not saying, I'm not saying that those girls, those ladies there were were rude. But there is a very small portion of even if I'm a calm, collected cucumber, and I'm I'm trying to espouse my point, I'm met with "fuck you, get out of here, you're wrong," and it's angry, okay. and it's it 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 it, it it's not. You, it's, you give what you get. Okay. Same token. Yesterday, there was a large processional for a fallen, for a, oh. a, a fallen uh, uh, animal officer. Uh, I, know, I know. Okay. So if I'd have stood along that route with a megaphone and calmly and rationally spouted out defund the police rhetoric, do you think they would have not stopped me and removed me and they would have not had an issue with me? Depends on what city you're in. Um, I'm just saying, do you think that I could get away? Do you think 100% of the time I could get away with that? I would say 99.9. Especially mm-hmm. in today's day and age. Unfortunate, but true. I, I don't mean, think so. I, I, think, I think you'd find I mean, you that, would meet... I, I you think would... you'd find that the police office was, officers would slowly, calmly find a way to remove you so that it didn't ruin their thing and Mid- not like you. And that's cops because their eyes are on you. But, I mean, you're, 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 it's, it's the same case. Right. You're going to stand there and whatever you're doing, you're, it's doing to be inflative. Right. True. Dr. Gert. There you go. Uh, no. Just, Dr. Uh, Gert. Yes. Dr. Gert. Yes. <laughs> now, so in relation to that post, I, uh, I saw that this morning and I just start reading through it and then there's these ass clowns who say, oh, Good thing we we have enough overtime to spend on all this bullshit. And I just chimed in. I said that that animal was a cop. He oh, just, we're talking about Ozzy. Yes. Okay. I said that animal was a cop, and they deserve the same regalia and the same duly deputized by the law, trained and to to, to say goodbye. I, 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 I get it. It's it. a little I, overboard. I understand it, but you know. Um... <laughs> in, in, it's just in, disrespectful in our town it's tough when you can't get a street fixed but <laughs> all right when I, I can't get my fucking street fixed. well that's been norwich for 100 years it's all the right. most it's the same it, watch 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 it's the same fucking street for 20 years man well, watch his face dunham street oh i <laughs> asylum street it took him 30 years to fix asylum the, street one, one of the biggest connectors from the west side to the to 80 to to fucking 32 and they're just taking their sweet ass mm-hmm. time. Norwich has been mismanaged for a hundred years, mm-hmm. and that whole downtown project would have been such a success had they actually gave a shit. Hey, let's take fifty thousand dollars and put. Let's put five just, roundabouts in. Let's put no. That's the state. Oh, I don't give a shit. Is that on thirty two. That's the state. Let's take fifty thousand dollars of grant money and put exercise equipment in Mohegan Park. <laughs> yeah, that one went up my ass. <laughs> I saw it when it was still wrapped up. Emma and I went to the park and fed oh, the ducks and whatnot. Yeah, and she's like, like that what's all this? I'm like, I have no idea. It's still wrapped up. Yeah, Two days it, later, they got the big reveal. I'm like, do we really need a fucking stair climber near the... And a, and a workout and, and like outdoor workout machines yeah. in the park. Like you took that money and thought that was the best use of $50,000 oh. in this town? Christ. Can I get a sidewalk, please? Can uh, we get Dunham Street fixed? Christ. I thought I thought they were done last week. No problem getting on and off Dunham Street. Yeah, like, like I wow. thought it was. I thought I thought. All right, we're gonna get. No, some, now it looks like Mad Max is gonna come out and soon. rape you if you no, drive down that road. No, they just took another eight inches of dirt off and. Oh. 
It's all about the inches. Of course. Well, <laughs> what is an inch? You know, I mean, eight, 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 West <laughs> it's Dame a Street, social construct. West Dame Street, that was a DOT job. That looks great. Yeah. yeah. Did it fast, done, done. Oh. But anyway. Off we, the point, but on the point. No, I, I, I agree. <laughs> we digress. And I, no, I, I, I think um, I think making an analogy to re- religion is is very prudent because it, it's the same thing. It's the worship of self, it, well, right, yeah. right? Because I worship a different god than you do, or than this guy does, and this guy does. I worship myself in a different way than a trans person. Well, that, would. that's my that's my theory. Is that there's there's religions all have whatever their central god people are because depending on the religion like uh, some of the indian religions and they have um, multiple gods yep. and different things so Same with the every Greeks. every religion has their their hierarchy of who the the, the top people are who reports to who <laughs> i believe that everybody runs in their head off of what i call demigods hmm everybody has yes there's that big god but everybody has what that god means and how they understand him in their head so even within the same religion you take 10 you can take 10 people and get 10 different views because they all have a different demigod in their head johnny doesn't think that his his god will have a problem with the behavior that he just exhibited while susie's god does think that that is 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 probably not good behavior. While Bill's God is indifferent to that, and it doesn't matter, and that's that's kind of the way it gets in in everybody's head. That's that's the demigod effect. Is everybody has a god, but then they kind of tailor it the way they want it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So does the every uh, doctrine is different, right? So is the top god concept really there? Or is it just something we use to make the demigod that we think we want? No, good point. Which around. is kind of what the trans thing is. It's creating the demigod that you want to believe in so that that works within your life. It's not actually praying to the, 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 to the straight concept. It's altering it slightly so it works for you. Mm-hmm. Right. And that, and that can be said of any religion too, really. I mean, yeah, you know, good, yeah, point, yeah good point. Yeah. You tw- you twist it any way you want it to make it apply to you. Like, why is it the Catholics fear God and the Christians think that God is comforting and caring? Well, it depends. If it depends, Old or New Testament. Yeah, same. Yeah. I get it. Depends Old. on the Christians read the Old or New Testament. Uh, a, a, Old, a, a, Old Testament, well, that's a, fire a, and brimstone a, shit. But to to get more modern, a Christian says, you know, I'm a sinner. I'm always going to be a sinner, and that's just the way it is. Catholics, you got to go and confess your sins. You yeah, have to you, tell somebody. Yeah, I mean, about if it. you're just looking for like religion, you have light, to go up the grapevine, right? And then if you like are looking for like religion light, you go with like a Gideon's Bible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hang out at an airport, you'll find one. It's like religion medium. It's yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> one third, same great religion, half the the same calories. great taste, right. half the bullshit. <laughs> It tastes great and it's less filling. And don't don't and make you it don't stink. stink. And you don't stink. <laughs> Try Blue Emu Religion. Oh my God, we have gone off the rails. Yes. Um. All right. So I guess we all liked it. Yeah. We all had our bad. we we had our our good points, our bad points. Uh, oh man. I I thought it was good, and I can't wait for the book. But again, I'm two months away from buying that some bitch, even though it comes out this Tuesday. This coming Tuesday, I should say, not today. We're recording on Tuesday, by the way, today, just so you guys know. Won't hurt you guys any. You're still going to get it on Wednesday. Yep. So suck it up and deal with it. Oh, you guys got any random bullshit? I don't know how much time we have. No, we're at an hour and 18 right now, so it's a little short, but not bad. My my mind has officially been emptied. I've been thinking about Domino's 599 carryout. That's what I'm thinking about, some dinner and Uh then taking a nap so I can go to work. Well, yeah, you two guys got to get up at the ass crack of dawn, and I will think of you when I'm rolling out of the rack at 630. I'm going to wake up so early. I got to remember to wake the rooster up. I was going to say, yeah. (laughs) You have to pull the chain so the sun comes up. For real. I got to remember to turn the sun on. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, thank you for indulging me watching that movie. No um, problem. Glad we had some really good talk about it. Thank you to Corey for coming on here and telling us about all the women he had. Yeah. Not really, but and in it's, the back his, room. And it's his club. Heard he had at his club <laughs> in the back room. And thank you to you, everybody. So we have one question to ask. Have you rated the show yet? If not, go to wherever you find this podcast. Give us a five-star rating. 
tell us what you think. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. Tell us what you'd like us to cover. Also, Junction Dysfunction Show at gmail.com is a place where you can contact us. And do we have an email? I'm pretty sure somebody told me they sent an email. Oh, we did. There was a Zach. There was a there was Zach's a, on it again. By the Zach. way, Zach, I got the card. I just got to get it to you somehow. The uh, message from Zach was uh, in regards to the gun control show. I uh, thought it was a great show. His only comment was in uh, Lynch's regard to referring to it as a clip, and it's technically a magazine. No shit. Sure. That that was that's 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 all I could come up with, you know, and it's that it's that terminology thing, kind of, you know. But um, other than that, that's the uh, that's the uh, the the big the big mess up or issue. So yeah, no, it was good. Little feedback, nothing crazy, just a little personal preference. You you gotta love feedback, and guys, the only way you're gonna make what you hear better is to tell us what we can do for you, the people. So, any last thoughts? Uh... No, I think we're good. No, I'm good. All my thoughts are leaving the room. Oh, well, same here. Same here. <laughs> I had to get my fat ass down to Domino's. Five ninety nine carry out if you go through the app right now. You don't even need a special code. Just have the app. And with that, we say good night. Our Domino's spokesperson has spoken. <laughs> if only we could get a little uh, dough from them. That'd Third be Domino's, great. Uh, you know, we, we'll push you if you know you want to help us out, buddy. Do right. me, baby. We'll see you next week. Peace.